We might actually talk about NBA for the first time all year. A soccer legend passed away. Tons of NFL stuff and Happy New Year's, everybody. This is the We Don't Know Sports Podcast. Stay tuned. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the We Don't Know Sports Podcast. This is Chad the Mark with Mr. Brown and Canadian Biggie. Gentlemen, it's not quite New Year's Eve, but it will be when most people listen to this. So happy uh, New Year's. Happy New Year. Do we figure out what we're going to do yet uh, for the new year? Have we got any plans yet? Uh, not officially. we got we got to figure that out. I, I, can't, games. I don't know if I can make myself go to come Panda's house. <laughs> if you know, you know. Yeah. And uh, I, You're not alone. Uh, at least uh, I would be scared to go in the basement. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, we still got like 24 to 48 hours to figure it out. But uh, I, I don't want to go too far. I want to keep it close. I'm always – it's the only night of the year, that and Super Bowl night, are the only two nights I'm afraid to drive because of all the other jackasses out there. I was just going to say, when you were talking about it, I thought that's where you were going. And Super Bowl's the other, only other night I ever think that way. Yeah. Just too many people out. Like all drinking. Jaw Force okay because it's warm. Everybody's – they day drink. You know, yep. you're not day drinking on New Year's Eve. You're not day drinking on the Super Bowl. It's cold. We're getting a late start. So, uh, anyway – be careful out there, and uh, hopefully nothing bad happens to you. But speaking of tragedy and bad things, I, I don't know if it's necessarily tragedy. I think he was 82 years old, but Pele passed away. And Pele was uh, considered the greatest South American soccer player, I think, up until recently, if not still debated. I don't know. I'm not really a soccer fan, but as a kid, you knew who Pele was. Uh, you know, it was just a, a name you recognized. I guess he helped him win a World Cup, uh, but... You know, Mr. Brown, you, you have a son who plays soccer, so you have a little bit more familiarity with the, the sport. And We did just have the World Cup, um, but what does that mean to the world of soccer to you or, or to anybody? I mean, help me understand. I mean, Pele is the only player I knew I've grown up, but uh, he was known all over the world, played for Brazil, um, but he's <laughs> – He's kind of the uh, Michael Jordan or even Babe Ruth icon of the sport. What did you pull up? So, uh, world record. Oh, wow. Pele played 1,363 matches and scored 1,279 goals. So, that's almost a goal per match, right? Yes. Do they call it match? You can't call it a game. They call them matches. It's so stupid. Or a friendly. What is the difference between a match and a friendly? Uh, a friendly is like a, uh, what I'm trying to say here, like preseason, pre-season game. game. Yeah. Okay, so it don't matter. Exhibition. That's why they call it a friendly. Yep. <laughs> uh, so uh, any anyway, uh, it, could you look up the same stat for like uh, Ronaldo or Messi or somebody? I'm just curious, like like how, how many goals versus how many. Is there, a, is there a soccer or football reference like there is a baseball reference? Uh, if there is, I'm not going to be able to quickly find it, but I can tell you. How many career goals Messi has? Because you, you were telling your son how big a deal it was, and he was like, hey, he's a bum compared to these guys today. And I don't know if that's true or not. Well, yeah, he just said, I said, Pele passed away is considered the go to soccer undisputed. And he was like, I don't know. You know, I don't think he's got the stats they got. Well, then I told him to look up uh, the all time greatest for soccer, and they had Pele ranked 15th, which I think is crazy. And then they had Messi number one, but. You already got Messi up. So Messi has 695 goals and 831 career games. So he's out with 349 that. assists. I don't know. I don't know what that. I don't know what Pele's was, but Pele, yeah. So you look at the numbers. It's more like Gretzky to Ovechkin. Does that make sense? Yeah, like he I had a hockey reference in there. In almost 500 less games played, he already has more games he hasn't scored a goal in than Pele. Right. So you know that 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 ratio won't be corrected. I just have one other thing here. What was the movie with Mike Dicta and Will Ferrell? The Pele Ball. Is that uh, Will kick, Ferrell's co- is kicking that, and screaming. Robert is Duvall's the dad, and he's got the Pele I, I Ball. I think so. Okay. I don't. Re- I don't remember enjoying that movie. <laughs> I watched it because it had Will Ferrell in it, and I only watched it once. Dude, you have a giant eyebrow hair hanging off your face. Do you see it? <laughs> yeah. do you, no. Do you see no, it? I seen it earlier. All right. Hang on. No. Let me pluck it like, right now. Let me let me just get it. I Look can't. it on the air. Uh oh. Scream. Ah! 
I don't think I got it. No, you didn't. Mm. All right. It, speaking of uh, other unspeakable things like Biggie's long eyebrow hair that's going to bother me the rest of the show now. Um, the uh, NBA, uh, I, got, I don't watch much NBA. I don't watch much basketball other than college. And uh, I got the Denonet, Denonet update. Uh, Luca, what the hell? Did you guys, I didn't even see highlights. So you tell me, outside of being the most significant stat line I've probably seen in 10 years, uh, what the hell, man? In that game, what do you end up with? 60 points, 20, 21 rebounds, 11 assists. They were losing to the Knicks by nine with like a minute left and ended up tying the game, sending it to overtime. <laughs> so it was his own Reggie Miller moment. To send the game to overtime, they're down two. He does the deal. There's like a two and a half seconds left. You have to miss the free throw and get the rebound. He misses it. It gets tipped around. He jumps in the air, catches it, and hits it at the buzzer to send it to overtime. What's uh, Dallas's record this year? Do you have any idea? I'm going to say that uh, they're not in the playoff race in the West, but we can check. I think last I saw, they are 10th or 11th. Because like Luke has had this LA's fight. 13th. Dallas is uh, currently seventh at nineteen and sixteen, oh, wow. oh, so better than I thought they over were. Over five hundred. Oh, that much changed in the last two days, two th- or since Christmas. I, I was just curious because like Luca is hailed as this great, like he's in that conversation with Jokic every year about being this dynamic Euro player, potential MVP. But the difference between him and Jokic is uh, Jokic is winning, and uh, Dallas, man, they they're really not that good. Like so, they haven't been. They're seven seed right now. Luca is averaging thirty three point six points, eight point seven rebounds, eight point eight assists, one point seven steals a game. That's pretty solid. So year five, Luca. The last I saw was last week. He was thirty two points a game, eight and eight. The same Ooh, exact the stats Jordan that Jordan down. had on year five. Same exact. Sorry. Of course, back then he could touch a player. Are you saying that he's about to just take off? He might be the the best German player ever or whatever. He's not even German, is he? He might be the best white boy ever. Yeah. Passing Larry Bird. We're just going to call him a European. <laughs> they don't count. They're not white, right? <laughs> it depends on if it's Eastern or Western. Yeah. Or, right. Why is it that European white guys don't count? It's like always Larry Bird. Because they, they're all coming from poverty over there. No, I, I don't know. I have no idea. You might be living. Where are you from, there. son? Bratislava. <laughs> So, I will say this about Civil War. <laughs> Lucas' first year, he averaged 21 a game, and since then, he hasn't averaged less than 28 a game for a season. Mm. So, you had him and Trey Young linked together for that trade one to one, but it seems like, I mean, Trey Long, Trey, even though Trey Young can put up the points, uh, you got to go to Luca, man. Yeah, I so, mean, that's of a course, generational talent. Luca might have done some damage in the East. That is true. So, uh, what, what would what would Luca have looked like? So maybe maybe it worked out. For, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, all right. Speak. Oh, good. You got you got. I was gonna, just gonna say biggie. it's one of those that isn't you know a win or it's a win win not a lose lose. Luca is doing better. Trey Young is a twenty five point nine assist guy for his career. Hey, he's a bum. Terrible. Bad hair. Bad. The worst. Yes. Hair. Yes. Who, who who in the NBA has worse hair than Trey Young? Besides, don't say LeBron, Biggie. I know that's where you want to go. Reggie Bullock. <laughs> okay. Uh, Malik Monk. <laughs> <laughs> Google images are helpful on that one. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Butler. All right, so uh, Brooklyn, are, are they are they are they figured out now? Are they okay? Are they going to be good? Are they a title contender? What, what's what's your thought on on this uh, early season resurgence? Not all at once. Well, <laughs> they're currently two games behind Boston for the one seed. <laughs> in the East, sorry. I thought Mr. Brown was going to lead in there. Biggie's uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to show him stats, and I shoved it right in his eyeball. You and you got the freaking LED light on. Still got it turned on. That's my, No well, wonder I'm blind. <laughs> it distracts yeah. from my eyebrow hair. <laughs> <laughs> it, it didn't, by yeah. the way. Uh, Right now, Milwaukee sits third. Brooklyn, Milwaukee, basically in a tie for second. Brooklyn has went what twenty and six in their last twenty six games. Jock Vaughn, baby, went to college at Jayhawk. So ever oh, since they, <laughs> ever since uh, they let old Steve Nash go, they've been doing good. It's funny though you actually bring in a coach that actually has some experience. Amazing what that can do. Yep. Right? 
Hey, so we, we were joking about this, uh, the coach for Boston that got – Suspended. I, I mean, Udoka. Udoka. I always want to say Aloka. I don't know why. Neil. So, like, can you still trade coaches for like draft picks and shit? I thought that's what they were going to do when Steve Nash first got fired. The rumor was he was going to go coach the Nets. That's what was making me think of it. And, and like, so if you're Boston and you're doing this well and Missoula seems to be all right, like, you got to be taking phone calls on this cat. You um, know? Not, not now, man. Jock Vaughn, coach of the year. I'm not saying that team. I'm yeah, just yeah, saying yeah. somebody in general. Uh, it's kind of weird, though, because you had the super team of Brooklyn, Kyrie, Durant, Harden. They trade Harden to Philly. They get back uh, Simmons, which we said was going to be a great trade, you know, and they finally did. <laughs> it seemed like a fit. Yeah. So then Simmons is actually doing okay. I don't know if it was correct what Biggie said, but maybe – so he, get, he gets like some 11, 9, and 9 games. But uh, now Brooklyn's finally doing it. They could come out of the East unless Milwaukee gets healthy. Then you got to go Milwaukee or Boston. Leads him and steals an assist. Yeah, leads him and steals steals an assist. All right, Biggie. Next time you look up a stat, just say it instead of showing him, and yeah. then just like pause him for a second. But yeah. uh, I feel like showing everything I got <laughs> off. I, you, hey, I want to see it. I, I just want you to share with the audience too. Yeah, uh, I got a German speedo. You, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you brought up Harden. Did you see the reports about him saying he wants to go back to Houston? Is that real? I, I think so because he loves the strip clubs. We know there. that. Is that what this is all about? That, and I think he knows he can shoot as many times as he wants. Like, Houston has been just terrible since he's left, right? right? Maybe. Like, he's the guy there. He's actually like a god in Houston. <laughs> has there ever been more in the last, say, 15 years of a me player than James Harden? In Houston, doesn't care if he wins or loses, puts up a ton of numbers, takes every shot like you're at the Y and he won't pass it. Doesn't care about winning, obviously, because he couldn't make it work in Brooklyn or Philly's not going on. Here's what's crazy, though. So he's putting up – I got him in fantasy, by the way, so I know this. He's averaging like 22, almost 23 points a game, but he's averaging almost 13 assists. But he's like, hell no, nah, those assists are way too high. I need to be scoring about 10 more points a game. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 23 and 13. Oh, You know, the NBA is a better place for having him. That's all I'll say. I hope he goes back. I mean, he goes back to Houston. He's looking at like 35, 37 again. Magic City! <laughs> Can you guys tell me who the uh, number one team in the Western Conference is? It's not the Warriors or Lakers. No. Uh, um, it's def- mm. It's Big Boy Gumbo. Mons? Zion, the guy who can throw a football 80 yards. Are they seriously number one? They're, uh, well, techni- they're tied with Denver. For the first in the but West. But remember how he was like not playing and he was like kind of holding him hostage. And now he's like, I want to make this a town people are proud of. It's amazing how that changed. Well, like they're unbeatable at home. Is it? Is it really a okay? That's 15 and four home record. I, I was ready to write Zion off. Is he is he producing? What's what's his stat line look like this year? Can uh, let's get our research department on that. Maybe look it up. Uh, <laughs> The, uh, Zion's putting up 26 points a game this year. Rebounds. Yep. He is putting up is he double only double? seven rebounds a game. And negative seven. two blocks. And yep. <laughs> <laughs> the man jumps Six like through the roof and he rebounds. won't play defense. No, he's scared he's, scared he's going to hurt his yeah. ankle. Yeah. I don't want to come down on their foot. His my 26, rip off my foot. <laughs> seven, five assists, All one right. steal. Right. So that's a good stat line yeah. for a guy that's barely played in the association. And he's a big boy. He's he's in better shape though, right? Like yeah. he looks looks like he's not as spent as much time eating Wendy's Frosties or. Whatever. He reminds me like of a hawked up Charles Barkley. Okay, that's a good comp, you know. I like that. They're uh, so they're number they're number one. Uh, who's and, and Denver's tied. Yep, so them and Denver are tied atop for the number one seed. Memphis is a game and a half back. Well, you know what Denver's Denver they're they're good for number one seeds and they fall out of the playoffs like me. Yep. So that's yeah. what Denver's going to do. Fantasy Early fo- exits. Fa- fantasy football foreshadowing. Yes. Uh, yes. And then uh, just a, a quick question. Um, I, just because I don't know what the hell's going on in the NBA. What's Portland like? With like, because there's another like talent that's real big, but he's not, he, he's not even playing, is he? In uh, the old days, Portland would be in the playoff picture right now as the eight seed. But in the new playoffs, they'd currently be in the playoff. Tournament it, as the eighth. They're eighteen okay. and sixteen. All right, is Lillard still in Portland? Yep. It, yeah, and no, you know their coaches, right? No, Chauncey Billups. Oh, I do remember hearing that, Mister uh, Big Shot. 
What about, uh, uh, are they? Is he going to go anywhere? Is that like? Uh, I mean, there's are, always are rumors that him getting traded, fix? but I know I think he's uh he's a trailblazer for life, mm. for better or worse. For better or worse. All right. That was more NBA than we've talked uh, probably since the finals. How do you feel? I feel like we were kicking a dead horse. <laughs> hey, I learned something though. Y'all help me through. <laughs> Uh, we got a lot of football to unpack. Uh, I mean, a lot of – it's an exciting, like, final couple weeks here. And the NFL just seems to keep getting things right. This is why they dominate the world of sports. But, you know, Mr. Brown, you are, for better or worse, a Raiders fan. And let's just start there because, you know, there ain't no – we were talking about bad haircuts earlier. Let's talk about that, right? But mm. So, Mark – Davis and his, I'm going to do my haircut myself, you know, franchise here out in uh, Las Vegas is setting records for losing as many close games as a team possibly could in a given year. Uh, you know, it, it's come to a crossroads, though. So tell everybody what's going on with Raider Nation right now. Well, we're celebrating. Are, are you cel- You're I'm celebrating. Not, yeah. Um, they finally decided to bench Derek Carr. Uh, a Pro Bowl quarterback. You See, know, to, put, putting up numbers. Of course, everybody makes. He's, he's numbers. way overpaid. Obviously, um, he's been an average quarterback since he's been in the league. Never won a playoff game. Uh, to me, we've wasted way too many years on Carr because you you've got to have results. And I'm sorry that you lead the league in crying at press conferences. <laughs> that, that that stat don't matter to me. That's not on the back of his card. No. So here's the thing, though. That, so they finally benched him. Stidham has like I think 61 career passes in NFL. I was talking to Biggie, Patriots fan. He's going to be like a, a – he's – ceiling is a backup, but he won't like he, – he's fine to come in for a few games and not be exposed. But And let's be honest, he's barely hanging on in the league right now. I, I agree, but we're going to draft a quarterback in this draft. Uh, I also hear rumblings that uh, Josh Jacobs wants out and now Devontae Adams especially because they were teammates at Fresno, and that's the reason why he came. Um, so I think we're looking at another uh, rebuild – for the uh, next decade, which would make it about 30 years or so. This is going to be a, a bad rebuild uh, for sure. So, um, But to me, you have to trade Jacobs because the, sit, the the window for running backs is so small. Trade Jacobs now. Get some trade Devontae. Just blow it up. Yep. Do, so, the, do the opposite of what the Rams do. Right. <laughs> It'll be Stidham's first career start. Carr has been your starter since he was drafted as a rookie in 2014. He's only missed two games in that time. He's went 63 and 79. You've been in the playoffs twice with one victory. Correct. I had somebody, I got an argument with some people in another fantasy league, and, you know, they, they like to defend. They always are rooting for that up and coming quarterback, uh, but they think everybody's going to be good. And, and, you know, like they'll, they'll defend Baker Mayfield's bad performance, you know, and say, you know, he's not that bad. And then, you know, I might point out, well, what's his record as a starter? And they're like, well, quarterback, it's not just one one player can't have a record. And I'm like, bullshit, you can go look up QB records. You can't go look up a running back record, you know, but you can find it on quarterbacks because it does matter. And that's the thing, you can be a stat monger, but if, you're, if your record's not good, like that, that's a reflection. And to me, there's a – I don't – you can tell me if I'm way off on this, but there's a pivot line for quarterbacks. And I think back to Kirk Cousins when he was in D.C. And remember, he kept getting franchise tag, franchise tag, and he put up good numbers, but they didn't want to commit to him long term. And they ended up not doing it, and he's gone to Minnesota where he's been really good. But, like, that's the line, I think, when you look at quarterbacks. And, like, Cousins was just above it. Carr was just below it, Right. And that's a bad place to be because he's good enough to where you have a little bit of hope and faith, but it just never got better. It, it was, he never progressed. He ruined your draft picks. He's good you're, enough you're to keep you from be, having a good a top, draft. You're never going to be yep. a top ten. Right, draft. right, right. Well, and this year though, he had his probably his uh, best offensive surroundings. Yeah. And he's leading the league in interceptions with fourteen. Yeah. So I mean. On, I, just, I just wonder what Devontae Adams is thinking because preseason he was asked, what's it like going from Aaron Rodgers to Derek Carr? And he said, I went from one Hall of Fame QB to another Hall of Fame QB. And now that Hall of Fame QB is probably wearing a Colts jersey spoke, next year. Spoke a little too soon. Uh, but, you know, it, it's – He is the next what? Colts quarterback, right? <laughs> Has to be. I mean, that's, <laughs> that, that's been their trend. Uh, who, who's starting for them this week? The Colts. Nick Foles again, right? <laughs> I mean, this is like a time machine. 
I don't know what's going on. So the most Raider thing that's going to happen next year is Brady's going to be starting for Vegas. I have heard a lot of that. If, if they were still in California, I'd almost buy that. Uh, but I'm Brady, Brady's you. playing next year, right? Yeah. Yes. We just don't know where. I'm telling you, that'd be the most Raider thing ever. It would be. He is playing next year, and it's not in Tampa Bay. Right. All right. So let me. We talked about the Raiders a little bit about the Patriots because we got Stidham knowledge there, but New England's eh. But I mean, Bengals New England played last week, and and Cincinnati tried to find every way to lose that game, but fortunately. New England found Good. just as many reasons to lose that game. Goes from 22 to nothing to 22 to 18. We got the ball first and goal inside two minutes. No timeouts. Run it a couple times to kill the clock. Score this touchdown. And Ramondre, who is one of the best players on the team, one of the most trusted players on the team, fumbles. And the fumble was kind of weird because they drove him back a couple yards and then it came out. Yeah. Usually they blow the whistle, but they didn't this time. And oh my they God. didn't deserve to be that close in the game to start he with. He wasn't close to going down. He wasn't in the grasp. He, he moved outside of the line to try to run off tackle. But anyway, I don't know. I didn't see the plea because my TV froze up. They were uh, we were, we were texting back and forth right when that was happening. And uh, the, the, the Pats, man, from the week before with that god awful ending to this one, you know, that hurts. Uh, I, I don't know. As they, bad as that is. They're just snake bit now. Did they win the last two games or in the playoffs? Right. They still have an inside track. Like they control their own destiny. But my question is, Cincinnati has been on a tear and, and we were talking earlier how we feel like they kind of, play up and down to their opponents a little bit, although they will occasionally just smash a team that they don't, you know, really deserve to play. But uh, what, what's your thoughts on Cincinnati? I feel like right now they're better than they were at this point last year and they ended up making a Super Bowl run. Am I crazy for thinking that? No, you're dead on. They've got the longest winning streak in the AFC and they have the second best point differential in the AFC. The, they're uh, plus 85. The Bills are plus 157. So – you look at the top teams, and we'll find out a lot about them this week playing well, they Buffalo. Because play yeah. they have proven that they can go in to Kansas City or at home. They have no issues stepping up on the big stage. They beat them three straight times. They own their division. The only other team you worry about in playoffs, really, right? Buffalo. Playoffs. Play them this weekend. This weekend will tell me a lot. But they have not they're... played either. Yeah. Like Cincinnati, any iteration of this team and Buffalo's team, they have never met. Yeah. So this is all brand new. And Buffalo's got something to play for still, you know, because Kansas City and Cincinnati's right. They're knocking on the door for home field advantage. And what's funny, if they all end with the same record, uh, Cincinnati would have the tiebreakers over all of them. So we'll see if that happens. Well, the thing with last year, though, at the Bengals, I mean, you know they're in the playoffs. You knew Burrow was a young and upcoming quarterback. You thought maybe it's a little bit too early. They got here probably overachieved. Um, but they got in the playoffs and they just kept rolling. But this year – they're battle tested. Burrow has that long playoff run, including a Super Bowl. So now he knows what it takes to get there, and they're peaking earlier. And if you told me that they went back, it wouldn't surprise me. They've got Casey and Buffalo, but they're right there. Like to me, it's they're still the third best team overall. You know, I think, but they're but close. It's, it's not, not a big. Game. It's not as far as it would was be even beginning of the season. Well, so. last year was a bigger game, right, even, right. even though Cincinnati beat Kansas City. Like how big of an upset was that? Now well, it's expected. They're a game off the lead for the one seed. They've won seven straight, which is 11 of 13. Because remember, they got off to an 0-2 start. Yeah. What's this team going to do? They've started the gel. And I actually like them in this playoff run, probably just behind Buffalo, if Buffalo were to get home field. I know Kansas City is Kansas City, but Cincinnati has shown an ability to beat them at their own game. And there's just a little bit of the allure of Mahomes and Reed has worn off like – they're dynamic. They're an overall great team. It's been team. a couple of years since they won a title, you know. But, yeah, they're – Yeah, but look at uh, – Well, I don't know what I'm saying is they, they found a saying. way to lose at home. It just – They're not winning the big games like you expect. You're not to. scared to go into Kansas City. No. But you look at the receiving core between the Bengals and the Chiefs. Oh, it's night and day. But if, if they didn't have a Kelsey – my God, I mean, Mahomes really don't have a lot of weapons when you look at it. They're, yeah. they're role players. They're every single one of them is a two at best. Right, but yeah. Cincinnati has some players. Right, and, and like they're at a point to where like like Higgins is going to be up for a deal. They might end up trading him. I saw a deal where they could uh, possibly trade him and a couple picks to the Bears if the Bears get the number two pick because the Bears want ride receiver and picks, and then you guys could get an offensive lineman or whatever. I mean, he, he just came off of a. 
the 100 yard game. I mean, yeah. he, he's my Adam fantasy this year. He's a good player if, if, if healthy. But that's yeah. the thing. I think that's what's helped Cincinnati is where Chase got hurt. Mixon was out a couple games. Like they've had to learn to win every which way possible. So when you talk about being battle tested, like they've done it without having their best guys in there every time. So if they're healthy come playoffs, man, I, I like them. I like them a lot. But I'm a homer. So right. Of I mean, I but the one thing about Mahomes, though, I give him all the credit in the world for keeping the Chiefs where they are record wise right now without the shiny toy. But they don't have. I mean, they're doing what they're doing. The defense has stepped up this year. They got Kelsey. The offensive line's been better. But they need someone like Tyree Kill to stretch the field. Right now, they have no one that can do that. I thought it was going to be Juju. He can't stay on the field. Yeah. I, I mean, they just – again, that's what they are is a bunch of, you know, the other guy that gets well, open because they have that, another elite receiver. Essentially, now they're like the Packers. Only yeah. They have a tight end. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they really are. Pretty much. And you can have a bunch of number twos when you have Andy Reid and Mahomes because Andy Reid will scheme them open one one. Push comes to shove at the end of the game. You need a Devontae Adams or a Stephon Diggs that can just beat two guys and get over. So before we jump into the power rankings, uh, you mentioned Green Bay, who's not in our power rankings top ten. Man, they're like the Patriots you were talking about. They also control their destiny to the playoffs. Like, who would have thought we'd be here now? Uh, I mean, you, you think they <laughs> Isn't have it crazy a how quick the talk turns from sit Rodgers down the rest of the year, play Jordan Love <laughs> after he played that second half against the Eagles too. Seven and eight, Rodgers is happy to believe playing meaningful games, and you're back in the playoffs. Yeah. And to me, I don't know, maybe I'm just way off on this one. The Packers, to me, are much more dangerous if they're the sixth or the seventh seed than they are being the front runner or the one seed. They, they clam be, up, they drop a, you dude, know. Dude, they're like Stone Cold Steve Austin, man. Nobody liked Stone Cold when he was the champion, but when he was in the chase and he was trying to get it, that's when it was entertaining. And that's what you want Aaron Rodgers to be, the dog trying to get it, not to be complacent. He needs to be hungry. Is he just bored and that's what he's doing now just to try to make it more interesting? No, I think their team sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. I mean, it'd be nice to think that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there was talks about him not being a Packer next year. So, I mean, it's it's crazy how, how this stuff changes on a dime. Uh, but let's get to these power rankings real quick. We still had Philly at number one. I think all of us had Philly at one, correct? Correct. And, and that's with Jalen Hurts out, but we still think they're good. They, they lost – but, like, it took Dallas everything they had with a backup quarterback. Dallas at home, everything they had, still came down to the last 30 seconds of the game. Yeah, that's uh, – again, that says more about Philly than I think it does Dallas. Yes. Uh, but uh, – so we still think they're number one. We have Kansas City at number two, Buffalo at number three. Um, I think the three of us are good with all that, right? I think. Did you have it any differently? I think you might have had Buffalo and Kansas I think, City. I like popped. Buffalo just a little bit better than Kansas City right now because uh, I like what Buffalo can do defensively just a little bit more. Like I, I can, I can hear that argument. The one argument I didn't understand, and I don't think you did either, was our our cohort Turbo Tommy that does these with us. He had Dallas as number two. Yeah, no, he's on drugs. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, we love you, buddy, but. Uh, you know, I, I felt the need to have to explain that in posting the power rankings this week. Um, San Francisco, we have a number four. If he'd have had San Francisco at two, I'd have been fine. You with can that. make that argument a little bit. I, I, I don't. I love Brock Purdy. I Isn't it just crazy well. how good that team is? That you have Brock Purdy coming in, Mister Real Relevant, and everybody's like, man, I think they'll be okay. Like I, I remember like Ashley, who's done the show with us a couple of times. I texted him like the week before. I was like, man, I think Purdy. Has a chance to give you like a Kurt Warner story here, like something about a guy that's not supposed to be in this position, but here he is. And, uh, man, I, I, I like it's easy to say that now. I don't say that about many quarterbacks. Like, I try to be really reserved on that. I don't, everybody loves the backup because if the starter yeah. sucks, except for Jared Stidham, but usually you love the backup because you're like, maybe he, but even you will have hope that Jared Stidham might have a great game. You like Brock Purdy because you remember him kicking West Virginia's tail. Well, yeah, and, and I got love the quarterbacks that come from the smaller. But who schools, doesn't though? Right, yeah. well, that's all we can remember right now. But I, he seems to fit that offense perfectly. Is it a short term thing, or is it going to it, like is Brock Purdy in the playoffs going to be a thing that people are going to worry about? I actually think he fits perfectly because Shanahan's offense, offense, and that's why it worked real well when you had like Kirk Cousins or Matt Ryan as a. 
you hit your back foot, you throw the ball. It's a timing rhythm offense. It's not really built for like a scrambling type quarterback. Purdy is a guy who is very accurate and he hits his reads, goes through and boom, boom, boom. He doesn't try to make anything outside of it. I think he fits perfect. They don't need a guy to be like a, a put the team on his shoulders. Mm-mm. They just need him to be able to run the full playbook and not turn the ball over. You know, and so, if they do that, they'll beat anybody with a run game in that defense. So because Christmas and Christmas Eve was on a weekend, I got to watch a little football this weekend. And the play that stood out to me, I don't know if you saw this or not, but there was a play where he faked a wide receiver screen to the left, faked a wide receiver screen to the right, and, then the and, George and he Kittle. killed a wide open down the middle of the field. And I'm like, that is not a play you're calling unless you believe that guy's got a full – like. You know how long it takes that play to develop? Mm-hmm. Watch Parsons here on Dallas just destroy uh, Tennessee's so we, backup. We do have uh, our Thursday. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> he just threw him down. That wasn't as good as last week, but still. No. So uh, who's who's playing quarterback for the Titans? <laughs> I don't it's, know. Um, Isn't it Josh Dobbs? Yes, it's his first start. Former yes. Tennessee Volunteer. Um, didn't he? Wasn't he on Pittsburgh for a minute? I believe so. I think that's where he got started, but. Uh, we got we got Dallas and uh, Tennessee going on in the background here. So why why is Malik Willis not playing? Is it they just don't have faith in him, or did he get hurt? I think he's hurt or sick, one of the two. Maybe he's got the the Rona. Uh, anyway, uh, we actually had the Bengals at six. Uh, the Cowboys were at five. Bengals were at six. Vikings are at seven. Like I, everybody talks wonderful about Jordan Jefferson and, and all that, but like Justin Jefferson, Justin Jefferson. Sorry, <laughs> hey, my, my mistake. Not- Robbie. You say George Jefferson? J. Jefferson. No, I ain't Sanford and Son. I don't know what's happening. We don't have. All right, so that theme song, I never knew what the hell they were saying. I thought they were saying, bees don't burn on the grill. And I'm like, who's cooking bees on the grill? That makes no sense. And then it was like, I was like 28 years old, and it was like closed captioning. It said beans. I'm like, well, damn, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Glad I could take you on that little trip down memory lane. Appreciate that. But uh, what's his name? Justin? Justin Jefferson. Jay Jetta. The master of the gritty. He might be the best wide receiver in all football, and – but yeah, people still crap all over uh, Kirk Cousins. Uh, but here we are crapping. He over broke the White Randy Cousins. Moss's record, man. Yeah, but who was throwing him the ball? The great white hype, Kirk Cousins. Um, I, I say this about Minnesota, and when you get in the playoffs, we'll find out when they have to go against like a, a Dallas or a Philly again. They find a way to win close games. Typically, good teams find a way to close late. See if that's the hat. The, if are, that's are, are what it is when lucky? they get in the playoffs. Are they good or lucky? That's the question. I, I think they're uh, they're more good than lucky. They're sixty percent okay. good. They're, they're lucky. Okay, I got you. All right, so then we got uh, the Ravens at eight. The Ravens are st- they're in the playoffs. Like are the Ravens are so hard to judge because without Lamar, they're just a but, completely. But they're different still team. hanging in there. Yep. I mean, is it going to be one of those things where you plug them back in and now all of a sudden they're electric and they just go crazy? I mean, maybe. Um, all right, and then uh, the Chargers have emerged back in the top ten. Uh, I mean, they're right in the playoff hunt now, and then the Giants uh, ended up as 10th. So that's our top 10. A- anything now that we've said on it for a couple of days that you just think is absolutely ridiculous, or are you good with that? My, how quickly the Dolphins have fell. That's what I was just going to say, the exact same thing. The Dolphins are 8-7. Two seven. has got a concussion again. The Giants are 8-6-1. and one. The Giants with a win this next week clinch a playoff spot. The Dolphins went from eight and three, and we thought they might win the division. To are they even going to make the playoffs? Hmm. All right, I, I want to switch gears before we jump into the picks. Uh, we do have our Stone Cold Lead Pipe locks coming up, and uh, I think we might see the Costanza method again. But anyway, we got the Titans playing here, and I, I was just thinking about this the other day, and maybe I was way out in left field, so I wanted to run it by you guys and see what you think. So, if his career was over right now, is Derrick Henry a Hall of Famer to you? And Biggie, I don't want you to look up stats here. I need you to keep that down. Go ahead. I would say yes, but since you're asking me, it's probably no. Because he, he started out slow um, before he became the Derrick Henry with the big, long dreads that we know it. He's like Tennessee. Samson. They just got longer uh, and he got stronger. Yeah. he. Who did he play for before Tennessee? No, he's always been there. Has it always been there? I feel like that he wasn't like – just bulldozing. It's the just there's so years. many Alabama court or running backs yeah. that have come yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to get confused. But. but I would say yes, but he really turned it on after a few years. I mean, he's got the 2,000 yard season in there. Um, as as good as he's been, 
I was going to ask, do you know where he ranks all time in rushing yardage, if you had to guess? 21st. 21st, what would you think? I'm going to say 25th. He's 43rd. Oh, wow. I, so that was my opinion, too. I was thinking he would probably be close to the top 20 at this point. Um, he's um, – I think he – so I think he's really good back and we'll see where he ends up finishing at, but he kind of has some of that effect of CJ 2K when he played for the Titans. He has a 2000 yard season and he's got this great speed. Everybody thinks he's this great back. No, he had one great year. He is the active leading rusher in the NFL. He, he's sitting at, um, 8,226 yards. He's played six seasons. Um, you know, the next guy close to him is Zeke at 8,200, then Mark Ingram at 8,100. Um, so isn't that crazy? Like Zeke's played, um, the, uh, they were drafted the same year and, uh, they, they almost have the same amount of yards and look how, like we shit on Zeke all the time. He's been hurt for a few years and it's, which it's, shows how much he was doing. They're, they're 11 yards apart coming into today. I would have never guessed that. No, it's insane. But, uh, to give you a comp, um, Terrell Davis, who's in the Hall of Fame, he had 7,600 yards. The difference is though, He's got a couple of shiny rings, and Derek does not. But, uh, you know, I'm not saying his career is over, but I was sitting there thinking, you know, how how close was he to that top 20, that top 10 in rushing yards? Yeah, but you give him, like, four more solid seasons, and that changes quick. Yeah, but, but he, it's a running back, so we'll If he gets so we'll two, two more yeah. thousand-yard seasons, then he's going to be in the 10,000 category, and it used to be – 10,000 yards, you're in the hall. Maybe wow. even more pronounced now the way running is. Uh, it'll get to 10,000 so, unless there's a major injury. So I, I'm i with you there. Guys ahead of him, uh, Willis McGahee. Like, think about that. Not a Hall of Famer. We look at Amon Green, Earl Campbell at 9,400 yards. So, I mean, he's, so, he's You know what I think about that. Derrick Henry and his chance to get there is that – the dog shit thing they're running out there, a quarterback from Ryan Tannehill to Willis to uh That helps Dobbs. perception of him? No. Well, it, it helps perception of him, but it kills his chance to get to 10,000 yards <laughs> if they don't get a quarterback over the next couple of years. What well, ensures that he'll run the ball? Uh, that, that'll happen. Against 11-man boxes. <laughs> well, he's got two more years, maybe. <sighs> uh, but, I, you know, I, I feel for the guy – Maybe they'll trade him, but uh, since the Thursday night game was on, I figured it was worth a mention. That being said, you guys ready to get to these week 16, 17, week 17. I forget this. It goes 18 weeks now. Week 17, NFL Stone Cold Lead Pipe Locks. Hit the music. Oh, we get a few more weeks of hearing that lovely NFL soundtrack that we got. We know the listeners love it out there, so hopefully it gets you in that football mood as we go once again down the rabbit hole to see if we can get some of these games right against the spread. We've been doing it all year, and to be honest with you, fellas, it's been a disappointing year. Biggie, you were above 500, and then what happened last week? I should have went the opposite. I should have went Costanza mode. 5 and 11, horrible week. Horrible, horrible. Bill Walton says a word. I'm not even in the top 100 now. Uh, so, uh, and then, Mr. Brown, you and myself, we've both been flirting with the seller, but I actually had a fantastic week last week. So, for Biggie's uh, terrible performance, at least I made it look like somebody was good last week. I went 11 and 5. And why did I go 11 and 5? Because I went against my gut on every single pick. Mm. So, I also would have went 5 and 11 last week along with you, Biggie. Mr. I can't imagine how good I'd be if I went against my gut all year long. I mean, so you're 103 and 128. I'm 108 and 123. We suck. Mm-hmm. So imagine we could be in the top 10 if we would have just done that from the get-go. Yep. What's wrong with us? So where did you guys roll with this evening's game? So I think we all were across the board. If I, no, no, no. I uh, picked Dallas. Let me get on the right week so I can look at these picks. But uh, I uh, also picked Dallas. It's a 14-point spread. It is a monster spread. I didn't think there was any way that Dallas covers that. What? You're doing that again. You're showing me the phone. Just say what it is. Oh, I took Tennessee. You took Tennessee. Mm -hmm. You and I took uh, Dallas. I thought Tennessee would cover. That's why I picked Dallas. Well, I actually thought Dallas would cover because Tennessee was down seven starters, including Derrick Henry. Uh, But, uh, you know, Dallas is doing what Dallas does, playing down to their competition. 
So uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, it's it's ten to three. Is that what it is right now? Ten six. Ten six. Ten six at the half. Dak Prescott needs. 56 more yards passing in the third quarter, motherfucker. For what reason, do You tell everybody. You gotta make me some money. All the degenerate gamblers need to know. 1-800-GAMBLER. <laughs> we're supposed to say that at the end, but Biggie's already clearly in the grips of addiction. So Yes, uh, we're just reminding him now. All right, let's get It's on. a side hustle. Let's get on to the rest <laughs> of these games and uh, side hustle your way above 500 this week. So we got the cards, the Dirty Birds out in the desert playing the Dirty Birds in southern Georgia. Uh, the Falcons at home for a three-point favorite. And 65% is rolling in on a line right now. Woo! That's a lot. And who's playing quarterback for the cards? Is it uh, – oh, it's not Colt McCoy. It's uh, – oh, man, they're playing some it's other guy. It's the dude from Penn State, right? Yeah. Trey McSorley. McSorley. Yeah. McSorley. Oh, oh. Isn't he the guy who throw the touchdown pass and then he pull the bow and arrow thing? I think so, but all the Cardinals fans are going to sorely be missing uh, McMurray uh, or something like that. I don't know. Uh, Biggie, what you got? Both, both teams really suck. The Falcons suck a little less and they're at home. Give me the Falcons to cover the three. Uh, I'm kind of going uh, opposite day as well. Uh-oh. I don't want to say it like you. So you got to give us your reason. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm going with Arizona. Because, you know, McSorley, you said, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, what's his name? <laughs> yeah, what's his name? Uh, but that's – how do you go against a guy named McSorley? Uh, well, you easily taking the home team who is favored uh, with the Falcons. Uh, they, they've actually been competitive in almost all their games, even when you don't know who their quarterback is. So, for that reason, I'm going to Costanza and taking the Cardinals. I really hate that pick. So, uh, you want to give us a lone Falcon? <laughs> Now you gotta do the dirty bird. You now do the dirty bird. I do not. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. with Jamal Anderson. Yeah, hey, Jamal Anderson reference. We love it. Next game on the docket, the black and blue division. We're in the NFC North for Chicago, the Bears, going into Detroit. Detroit playing for a playoff spot still? Like they're they're right there, aren't they? They're they not are eliminated. They got their dicks kicked in last week. Yeah, so it, it definitely took a blow to the uh, psyche there. But the Lions are favored by a touchdown. Here. You got 55% coming in on Detroit. I think that uh, the Lions bounce back after getting pushed around last week and they win this game by a touchdown. Yeah, I agree with you, Biggie. I think the two-headed monster there. Oh, oh Williams. Oh, they're great. DeAndre Swift actually starts them both in fantasy. <laughs> That's how good they are. Uh, so, uh, for that reason, I'm going to go with the Bears. Imagine the Lions had a defense. Uh, <laughs> you know, you're taking my thunder. Right? <laughs> I can just say ditto. I mean, yeah, I love the Lions in this game. Like, who's playing quarterback for the Bears? It's not Fields. I believe it is Fields. I thought he was hurt. He was, but he came back. Okay, so all right, so it's a banged up Fields. Yeah. It's on the road. It's in Detroit. Yeah, Detroit all day long. So hammer the Bears because we're always wrong. Chase, <laughs> Chase Claypool sliding this week. <laughs> Uh, that's that's not believable. I like Biggie's roar there. He was ready. All right. Oh, that was a lion. Yeah, that was his lion. I thought that was a bear. Oh, Biggie's. That was a lion <laughs> eating a bear's ass. <laughs> I'm just trying to process that visual. <laughs> I don't know why we had to take it there, but I appreciate that. All right, the uh, Denver Broncos. We didn't even talk about the Broncos yet. There's so much going on in the NFL. We didn't even talk about how they fired their coach. Uh, and that uh, Russ, is he da- he's done for the year. So, I mean, it's just a mess. Broncos going into Kansas City, and uh, the Chiefs are favored by 12. And you have 68% rolling in with the chop. I'm surprised it's not 98%. Well, you know, sometimes when teams fire their head coach and everybody rallies around the interim and they play a really good game, that's not happening this week. The Chiefs were up 27-0 the last time they played, only ended up winning by a touchdown. I think they do the same 27-0 routine, but they don't blow it. No, what's wrong? He sunk. Dude, more crappers than touchdown passes. More crappers than touchdown passes. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, I mean... 12 bathrooms, 11 yep. TDs. Come on. Was that story true about him having his own office and not being in the locker room? It came from uh, Deion Lewis, former NFL running back, on his oh, podcast. Wow. So I'm trusting it. I don't know that it's Man, true, true. It's amazing but... how much shade is just thrown around at Russ now. Yeah. Man, who you got, Mr. Dan? Russ is a weird dude, man. He's just weird. That's the only way you can describe him. He is like Carlton, really. 
That's what it looks like to me. You got to pick a winner. Who you got? Uh, well, the Chiefs don't have any receivers. We talked about <laughs> it earlier. All they got is Kelsey and uh, screw Patrick Mahomes. So I am going with the Denver Broncos to cover this one. Uh, I mean, I, I think uh, Denver is going to be lucky if they score 14 points. Kansas City's at home. They're fighting for a, a bye right now, so they can enjoy that. So Kansas City absolutely should win all day long. They should win all day long by two touchdowns. So give me the Broncos. <laughs> I don't know what the middle part of that was. Uh, this is interesting. So, so far we got Biggie off to a couple of lone wolves here. So, Mr. Brown, you and I are rather going to have a great week or Biggie's going to get back to 500. Uh, the Dolphins, with uh, two in concussion protocol again, he don't know what's going on. Uh, the Patriots, like you said, control their own destiny. They're favored by three in New England. And 62% says ride the Boston boys. <laughs> Give me the uh, fighting M. Jones and not the one playing quarterback. Uh, I like the Patriots to win this game by a touchdown. I think the Dolphins are reeling hard. Two is not going to play. It's going to be an ugly game. The Patriots will win before getting killed next week by Buffalo. So who's starting the quarterback? I think it's going to be Jacoby Brissett. So two is out for sure. I, not he, for he's sure. Just, he's in the protocol. They don't have to say till tomorrow, correct? Yes. Okay. So what's the difference between two and Tim Tebow? Uh, nothing. Uh, Tebow won a playoff game. Oh! <laughs> so I am going with the uh, – uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I hate the Patriots. Uh, I think they're going to cover, though. <laughs> uh, the uh, Dolphins have lost, what, four in a row? Yes. And, um, yeah, that psychologically will impact you just as much. It's going to get to the point now where they just don't expect to ever win again. Like, it's just going to keep falling apart. They'll still have flashes where they look okay. Uh, so, New England's pro- – I mean, they're at home, three-point spread. I, if I could bet a push, I would. So, uh, Costanza makes me take the Dolphins. Oh. So, am I the lone wolf? Yes. That- God, I can't do the Dolphins. Do it. I, can, do I, it. can I just ask you a joke instead? No. Just do it. Okay. Ace Ventura, let's what, hear it. What's the difference between toilet paper and a Dolphin? I don't know. You wipe your ass with one, you dumb son of a bitch. Come on, man. <laughs> what was that, a trucker joke? I don't know. <laughs> oh, That's my own dolphin. That's all I got. Ooh. All right, so the uh, Colts, whoever's playing quarterback. Oh, that's right, it's Nick Foles. We talked about that. On the road to the Giants. New England getting five and a half at home. New England? Or I'm New York, sorry. Wrong the G-Men. 78% of Vegas are with the G-Men. Wow, is that the biggest one so far? Yes, sir. 78%. Uh, five and a half seems a little stiff for a Giants team that doesn't score a whole lot of points, and the Colts have been playing opponents closer. But I think that they cover this, and this win, uh, they get this win to get into the playoffs. Well, you know, I really love Jeff Saturday. He, he's earned a contract extension, and for that reason alone, I'm taking the Colts to cover. You think so? I don't know. That's been a mixed bag, hasn't it? Jim Irsay will extend Jeff Saturday. I am not doing Constanza mode. I'm doing sarcastic mode. <laughs> I, I, okay. That, that was, that's why I was confused. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make sure. I did not have my sarcasm detector yeah. failed. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So, and then Biggie had to double down and confuse me even more. <laughs> Jim <laughs> Irsay. <laughs> like, what the hell is wrong with you guys? Am I living in Fantasy Island here? What's up? <laughs> The plane, hell? the plane. <laughs> exactly. Nobody under the age of 40 understands no. what you just did. Um, so, ha- have the Giants lost a little faith in Daniel Jones here lately? It seems like they have, or at least the media is railing on him. Uh, but they're at home. The Colts are a dumpster fire from uh, hell. Jeff Saturday is not the father. Uh, so, yeah, I just, the Giants should win. Five and a half, so give me the Colts. Uh, I hate that one. Nick, Big Dick, no Foles or whatever. He's coming out of the, uh, the, the, the lurky locker room and, and making an impact here. So, did, it, did anybody pick the Giants and we all pick the Colts? All Colts. I took the Giants. Oh, you took the Giants? Oh, yeah. All right, so one wolf be a Giant. Let's go, G-Men. Give me a feet 5 fo fum Feet 5 fo fum Here come the playoffs, LT. LT. He's not walking through that door. You give him some coke and he'll be through that door. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, shit. All right. The uh, Nolan Saints on the road to Philly. 
Uh, Jalen Hurts playing? Do we know? Uh, 50-50 at this point. He is projected for fantasy points, which means they think he's playing, but he's been limited in hey, practice. They, they're not going to mess around if they, if they think he's playing. they got to be honest. So, uh, anyway, they're still getting six and a half at home against the Saints. I've heard there's rumors Taysom Hill got cloned this week, so he'll be playing at tight end and quarterback at the same time. It's, it's like Mr. Perfect. So how do you – what kind of points he going to get in fantasy? <laughs> All of them. Exactly. So for that reason, I'm going with the Saints to come. Where, where was the Vegas money? Oh, my bad. Yeah. 77% Ooh, what on was the it? Eagles. Uh, it's still, all right, so that's second highest uh, confidence, Big B. Dude, you can ride the ghost of Kurt Henning. I am not. Fly, Eagles, fly. <laughs> Let's go. Minshew mania, baby. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, Philly will, will dominate this game, especially if Hurts plays. They're going to have something to prove after giving that one away to Dallas. Uh, I, God, why do I got to pick the Saints? I don't believe in this one at all, but Costanza says, you know, just remember, if you believe it, is it really a lie? So that, that's got to be the best advice ever. Uh, so uh, are you Lone Wolf again? I believe so. So we'll just recycle the bird noise from earlier at the Falcons. Fly like an eagle into the... That's great. Do you remember when Seal covered that song for Space Jam? That was mm-hmm. amazing. Come on, everybody. All right, the Panthers, who have been surprisingly good. Are they still not eliminated from the playoffs, too? They have a chance to win the division. Oh, that's right. They have that terrible NFC South. So the Saints, the Panthers, the the Bucks, they're all there. Oh, guess what? The Panthers are at Tampa this week. Tampa's getting three at home. And you have 64% coming in on Carolina. Carolina who just beat the hell out of my uh, Dan Campbell Lions last week and should beat the hell out of the Bucs, but they're not going to. Tom Brady rises again. They win the game to move 8-8 eight and eight and capture the division. So you got Tom Brady who actually cares again these final two weeks of the season because now he's auditioning for his role right. as the Vegas quarterback. Still got something so left. So now Brady has to actually play again. So I'm taking the Bucs to cover here. So, I mean, I, I definitely think just at home, like who's going to make the playoffs? Is it Carolina or Tampa? And I think if you had to put a gun in my head, I'd say Tampa. Uh, so give me the Panthers to, to go in there and do it because uh, Vanderlei Industries says so. Vanderlei. Uh, who did you pick, Biggie? You're a little wolf child. <laughs> That's all you get. That's the confidence level there. Hieroglyphics. Uh, all right, the, um, the Browns who have been – Underwhelming at best with uh, Mr. Buttholes uh, there. Uh, they're going into Washington, who, again, is somehow still playing for a playoff spot. The uh, Commies are uh, a two-point favorite. They had a 68% Vegas favorite. Mm. So the emails still have something to play for here, and Deshaun Watson has looked worse each week he's played. Give me uh, Riverboat Ron and the boys to cover two here at home. I feel like that... Uh, Deshaun finally found the right health spa that performs the best butthole waxing in Cleveland this week. I heard that happen on TMZ. So I am taking the Browns to cover. I like the word health spa. That's yes. Uh, so I don't have the same inside sources or a subscription to TMZ alerts, but, uh, you know, Washington at home, like they absolutely should take care of this. And two points I think is modest. I think they, Cleveland's been bad. So uh, I got a hammer, Mr. Butthole. <laughs> I got a hand with the Browns. Oh, keep that in. Edit, edit, edit. Uh, you, you started talking about health spas and butt That's two weeks in a row. I, I can't get things right when it comes to uh, the Browns. Damn it. All right. You like you're, real buttholes. I just have lions eating bears. We were talking about, we got it on, we got we it on audio. We were talking about hairy ones last week, mm. you remember. So, mm. uh, Biggie, you're the lone wolf of Washington. Ding dong! You know, he's just talking about the Trump NFTs, right? If you guys want to see a great fever dream, go watch that uh, commercial. He built his own Iron Man suit. <laughs> Greatest president ever. Better than Lincoln, better than Washington. No, that's terrible. <laughs> Jacksonville on the road to Houston in a game that no one thought would matter, but now it does because Jacksonville's been playing better. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, Mr. Sunshine himself, they're a four-point road favorite against Houston. And 72% favorite in Vegas. I'll roll with the Jags here. They still got a chance to win this division depending on how poorly, uh, no matter how poorly they play this week or the Titans in the game right here, next week decides who wins the division. So I like the Jags to uh, continue playing well and cover this. 
you know, Biggie, I agree with everything you just said. So I'm also going to take the Jags. Mm. So, uh, four points. Like, this game could go either way, but I feel like this is a game Jacksonville's got to win. Houston wants that number one draft pick. That's the way it's going to go. So, Jags, I think they run away with this one pretty pretty easily. So I got to take the Texans. Like, I'm, I'm taking teams that no one ever should take, and the Texans are one of them. So, my heart lies deep in the heart of Texas. I don't think your Constanza might as well work this week. <laughs> Shut up, damn it. It's going to work. It's tried and true. It's when the up. eyes of the ranger are upon. Hey, you know what they say, 60% of the time. It works every time. <laughs> Uh, the 49ers, who Ugh. might be the hottest team in the NFL, they're going on the. Ra- they're going to put your Raiders out of their misery. Probably the question is, are they going to do about at least nine and a half? Because that's what Vegas is uh, putting the odds on. We have the biggest highest odds now of the week at eighty percent coming in on San Fran. Wow. Yeah, I, I think this is an easy cover for the Niners. Ten's a big cover, but not this week. I'm taking the Raiders because now we got a real quarterback, a real man who don't cry at press conferences. <laughs> Damn it. It's, it wouldn't surprise me if Stidham came out in season six as Yellowstone. He's such a badass. <laughs> what the hell? So I'm going with the Raiders. Antagonist. Uh, Stidham and the Raiders. Discover the Stidham family ranch. Uh, We're so, rocking a duster. Hey, I, we, just go, we don't have a cry anymore, man. I'm happy. So uh, there's no crying in football unless you're Derek Carr. Uh, I, I uh, think that the Niners will continue being the hottest team in the NFC. They will absolutely beat the brakes off of this team. 80% of the people out there are taking them. But I got to stick true to my method because if I change now, it won't work. I'm taking the Raiders. Well, we are heading out west because they got gold nuggets. <laughs> At first, I couldn't tell if he was singing a song, and then I realized he was just saying random shit in a weird tone. Oh, wow. Oh, the lone wolf never disappoints. All right, the New York Jets on the road to Seattle in a game where you just look at it and say, somebody's got to win it. Uh, the Seahawks are a one-and-a-half-point home dog. Wow. Yeah, that's that's kind of odd, but obviously Vegas agrees. 68% of money is rolling in on the, the Hawks right now. I know that uh, Seattle has sputtered to the finish here a little bit, uh, losing some close games recently, but I like them to win this game, move to 8-8. Eight eight. Uh, I agree. See, who'd you say? <laughs> Maybe I don't agree. Seattle. 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 <laughs> yeah, I do agree. The fighting I, I, I can't believe they're the underdog here. It blows my mind. So I am picking the Hawks here. I mean, I, I think this is uh, Seattle's last chance to do anything in the NFC. They should absolutely take care of business at home. The, the, the Jets, though, I mean, I, I get why it's a close spread. I would normally take Seattle, but Costanza's got me taking the G-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. And uh, I don't even know who's playing quarterback for them this week. Is it? It's the fighting Mike Waits. He's back, right? Yep. He said his uh, ribs were healing. And- well, in that case, maybe the Jets will win, Chad. Mm. I mean, that's why they're favored that Vegas loves some Mike White. Yep. Uh, how about the Vikings going to Green Bay in December? Or is that game? No, it's December still. New Year's Eve. Right? No, 1-1, one, one, oh, baby. 1-1. One, one. All right, so January game in Lambeau. And uh, Packers are a three-and-a-half point. Yeah, home favorite. Well, Vegas very much disagrees, and 65% is rolling in on the Vikes. You know how typically New Year's has all that, like, New Year, New Me bullshit. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers is going to be the same asshole on one one as he was twelve thirty one, and they are not winning three and a half I points. Saying, I, didn't that, I didn't know if that made him a good or bad play here. What you got, Mister Brown? Yeah, I, I agree that uh, Mister uh, Jefferson, Jay Jetta. <laughs> What's his first name? George. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. George <laughs> and the Vikes are going to roll here. They're going to win easily. <laughs> Uh, they, they should. Uh, the fact that Green Bay's favored blows me away. Why, why, why are they losing faith in Minnesota so quick? But uh, maybe Costanza thinks this is where Green Bay gets their playoff shot. I, I'm taking the Packers. I hate it, but, you know, it's the method. Give us a lone Packer, Fudge. That's where they why, – why you guys – He already gave us that lone Packer earlier. <laughs> <laughs> that was Cleveland. That was the other Browns. <laughs> Uh, go pack, go. That's all I can. I, I, I'll do a Lambo leap later. Uh, all, right. all right, so 
We're down to the last couple games here. The Rams. Does anybody even care about them? They're going nowhere. They're staying in the same state. The Battle of L.A. The Chargers. Uh, that was a... Was that Escape from L.A.? Do you remember that movie, Kurt Russell? No. That's good shit. That's good shit. Uh, the Chargers are a six and a half point, technically home favorite. What do they call the, the broken down city of L.A. and Demolition Man? San Angeles? Uh, San Angeles. Uh, I can't remember. That's kind of what this is. <laughs> this is the San Angeles book. Murder, death, kill. Murder, death, death kill. kill. There's going to be plenty of those this game. Probably one of them is going to be in, Baker. In the stands for sure. And, yeah. So 56% is going with the Rams in the Battle of San Angeles. So here's the thing. I know the Rams don't have a whole lot to play for as far as having such a down year after winning the Super Bowl, but Baker Mayfield has a ton to play for. He looked great against the Broncos. Now he's getting to know the playbook a little bit. I like I like the Chargers to win, but just not by a touchdown. Uh, Chargers are going to win and they're going to cover. Eckler's killing it. Herbert's finally being the man we thought he would be. He's the guy that you would take home when he comes to your house and you're the father. You don't even get mad about it. Wait, now you're talking about taking a man home. No, no, yeah. All right, so when he he arrives at your doorstep, you mean when he comes? (laughs) Stop! 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 Stop. Herbert is going to cover, and they're they're winning this game. They're going to playoffs. Oh shit! Um, so, yeah, I think I I think the Rams are toast, man. Baker's going to look good against a. uh, a, a mediocre or a underperforming team, but the Chargers are fighting for the playoffs. So I, I feel like they take care of this one pretty pretty easily. I, I think it's like a 31-20 to 20 game. So uh, Costanza's got me taking the Rams. So are you Logan Wolf on this one? Did we both take the Rams? You? I took the Rams. Oh, we all took them. No, I took the Chargers. You took the Chargers, so it's you. Go, Chargers, go. That never gets old. Uh, have you seen those deep fakes of Arnold in Titanic? No. Yeah, I'm going to show you that after the show. It's the greatest thing we'll ever see. Um, so, uh, the Steelers, this is the Sunday night game. How did this get placed? Because it's Steelers Ravens for a playoff spot, possibly for the Steelers. Well, the uh, Ravens are a two and a half point home favorite. And 55% is rolling in on Baltimore. If I knew for sure Lamar Jackson was playing, I would take the Ravens to cover this. But there's the thing that'll happen if the Steelers win this game. They'll be 8-8 eight and eight going in the final game of the season. So it'll be a chance. As horrible as this team is and this season is, for Mike Tomlin to still never have had a losing season as a head coach, I like the Steelers to win this game. I feel like the argument could be made that Tomlin might be the best coach in the league, but he don't get the credit the other big names do. Uh, this game's always close in that division. It's going to be a Good old fashioned ass whipping, right? The slobber knocker. Slobber knocker, son. I'm going with the Steelers. So, Tomlin is a guy that, yes, sometimes he's underappreciated, but you could also say he's a guy with all the talent he's had, probably should have won more than one Super Bowl. Uh, but the AFC's been a tough conference, and it's hard for anybody to win multiple championships. Uh, just ask Aaron Rodgers, right? Uh, I would agree with you with more than one other than who did he have to play all those years. So, no. Nah, he I good, think he's done a, He's done well. And if not for Tom Brady, what does Pittsburgh's franchise look exactly. like? Uh, so, uh, I, you know, I think Baltimore takes care of business regardless who the quarterback is at home. Um, so, Tommy, I know you're a Steelers fan. I'm taking him just because I have to. Um, yeah. Across the board, right? Steelers across the board. Wow. And I, I would have taken the Ravens, but anyway, uh, that's uh, neither here nor there. It's time to get to this last game. The Cincinnati Bengals at home hosting the Buffalo Bills. It's game of the week. Tight as it can be. The Bills are a one-point road favorite. 54% is rolling in on your Bengals. So I absolutely think the Bengals are going to win this one at home and make a statement. I already told you why I think Cincinnati is one of the hottest teams right now. So Costanza will go ahead and tell me to take Buffalo. I just want to get that out of the way. And I agree with you, Costanza. Bengals all the way. I'm rolling Bills here. Ooh. Bills are going to win this game, keep the number one seed. Kansas City is going to lose to Denver on a last-second heartbreaker. Ooh. The Bills are going to have the number one seed locked up. They're going to sit all their starters next week. Patriots are going to win, be 9-8, and eight, make the playoffs to seven seed, and get their dick kicked in by Kansas City. Anyway, Buffalo covers. Nice. Uh, you so- do realize you picked the Chiefs earlier in your picks, right? Nip I know. Top. I said they're going to get upset. I know. I have to pick them to win or else they won't. Here, here's a question looking in the future. Is this a re- Will this be a rematch in the playoffs? Yeah. Okay. 
Right. I think this is a second round divisional round matchup. You gonna give me a lone lone bangle? You were lone wolf, right? I thought you picked the bangles. I did, but oh I have to yeah, pick yeah, the okay. okay. Um, that was you could have gave me a who day. I would have been happy. Rawr. All right, let's take a deep breath. I'm not real confident. In it. No, that's that's all right. The, the the quiet kitty cat is is all you need. Uh, hopefully. It's rather Mr. Brown and I are going to have a great week, or Biggie's going to have a great week, and I'm going to put my money on Costanza. Well, I mean, I didn't even go full Costanza, so there's several you, that I'm with. You got a too. hybrid in there. It's kind yeah. of weird. Yeah. Right, we'll see I don't know. I'm trying something completely different. These games, you know, we, we see where like Vegas is like 80% on somebody, and it's like, why? And then uh, here I am going against that in every single situation. Here we had three that were like 75% and higher. But that concludes the Week 17 NFL Stone Cold Lead Pipe Locks and Biggie for your side hustle. When it gets out of control, who do you call? 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, guys. So I'm still undecided on what I'm doing for New Year's. I know we were talking about that earlier, but the the one thing, and this kind of came to me today to, to look up and, and kind of check it out, but every New Year's, you know, you, you can see it on TV, like the Times Square stuff, and whether you're out at a party, there's a song that is played every year at the stroke of midnight. Do you know what I'm talking about? I can hear the song playing in it's my New head. York, New York, right? No, they play that after. Oh, That's... It's the, na, 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 na. you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So What's the name of that song? That's what I was going to ask. Do you know what it is? I don't. <clears throat> and I feel like everybody kind of like has <laughs> it. And they're blowing. Like, like they'll sing it like this. And, and I, the, and I, the, like nobody knows the words, but I see everybody sing it every year. Mm-hmm. And maybe I'm alone, but you didn't know what it is and you don't know what it is. But the name of the song is called Auld Lang Syne. And it's a it's a Irish term, and it means something like just you know something about like meeting somebody from the past. Like it's we've had good memories this year. I can't remember the exact thing, but here's the lyrics of the song. It says, "Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot in the days of old lang syne? What the hell?" And everybody sings it. Don't even know what they're doing. Singing this for like three hundred years. Don't even know, but does that? Do you hear it now in your head a little bit when I say the lyrics? No, I I, I knew it was something like that, but it's something you just kind of hummed along with. The reason why you remember New York is because people just kind of hum along with it, and then yeah. they have to turn the volume down because they're like, all right, nobody knows the second stanza mm-hmm. of this song, so then they just break out the Frank Sinatra. Right, you can't go wrong there. So uh, my question is, will you remember this on New Year's Eve and at least sing the first two lines correct? I won't remember the lyrics, but I'm glad I know that it, what you say, Irish? Uh, Irish or Scottish, I so can't remember. at least I know, I know the background now, and I feel better for it. I'll it, hum around to it. There you go. <laughs> Which is what we did anyway. <laughs> so basically you're saying you retain nothing Chad just said. Not a damn thing. <laughs> All right, any New Year's resolutions, guys, as we wrap up? Mine's to get back in the gym, get this shoulder going again. And I, I, you know, while I've not been working out, I've maintained my weight, been good. Just looking to get eagerly back in there, hopefully next week. But what about you guys? I don't believe in New Year's resolutions. I don't either. I was just trying to be polite. I believe that uh, (laughs) your life situations will dictate your change. That is absolutely correct. That is actually very prophetic and profound. I don't know if you can follow up anything there, Biggie. New Year's resolutions are for people who aren't going to follow through with them. It is not if you have to wait for a specific date to do something, yeah. you're not going to do it. You're, you're right. Uh, Mr. Brown, you're, you're a hundred percent. That's, that's anytime I've gone through change in life, it's because I decided that day was enough. You know, it's not about New Year's. It's about wanting to change. There are things I do believe in as far as not like a resolution. Oh, I'll hit the gym, but hey, where do I want to be a year from now? Let's use New Year's as my, whether it's personal, professional, where can I work to this next year? That's a date you can use to set a goal, but. Hey, I'm 377 pounds. I'm hitting the gym January 1st. I'm going to lose 150 pounds. Uh, sure. You know. So, speaking of resolutions, I heard on the radio today that, I don't know if you knew this or not, but gym, gym attire spikes tremendously in the month of January. I believe that. I, I was, I was telling Biggie this though. Last year, first week of January, I was blown away how not crowded it was. 
levels. Like I remember talking to a couple of buddies, like, man, it's gonna be so bad going to the gym. I'd go in there, I'm like, man, it's was great. it like COVID scare still? It was all well, that was in the morning. Now the couple of times I would go in the evening and, and you're seeing this now, evenings are pretty pretty damn packed. In yes. There. And uh, it's like the most annoying crowd. It can, what is so, up with the kids that have the haircut like this, man? Where they got the big poof in the front of the... Oh, my God. It it's drives never, me nuts. Man, it's always in their face and everything they're doing. They're flicking their hair like they're a freaking chick. See, I like the morning gym crowd because that's like the professionals. It's got to hammer routine. this and head to work. The evening gym crowd is... Look at me, check in. Better take a picture and post it on the, the Facebook or the Instagram or whatever. Ah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. All right. So if you have your New Year's resolutions, we're not going to judge you. Just stick to them so they're not New Year's resolutions and they're just life-changing choices you have. But uh, hey, I do. I, this is not a resolution, but I've decided I'm doing this in 2023. I am starting my vacation bucket list that starts this year. And you got you got a couple big ones planned. I mean, I'm definitely going – Somewhere big. You mentioned Hawaii. I'm going to leave the continental 48, right, right? Right now, I think it's probably, I'm leaning towards Hawaii. and I know it's expensive, but I don't care. So from everyone I've ever talked to that's gone to Hawaii, they would all tell you it's better to spend your money and go somewhere in the Caribbean. But if you've never been, I've never been to Hawaii. Well, so say, I, I ask my crazy following of 4,800 quote friends on <laughs> Facebook, and it was overwhelmingly Hawaii. Hawaii. Really? They're like, it's expensive. You're going to spend way more, but it's a place you'll never forget and you won't regret any second of it. I'm sure it's amazing. And like I said, I only know a handful of people. The crime rate, believe it or not, is way less in Hawaii than the Caribbean. Oh, well, it's probably recorded a little higher too. You know, you actually know when stuff happens. Uh, plus, uh, you can go visit Dog the Bounty Hunter. There you go. That would be worth it. I, I think I'm going to try to do a helicopter ride over a volcano. That'd be, I mean, see, that's some badass stuff there. Yeah. You know, you can't get that nowhere else. I'm not saying don't go to Hawaii. I'm just saying what a lot of people say. I personally would love to go to Hawaii. Can't, can't afford it right now. So maybe, uh, maybe if Southwest Airline goes bankrupt and somebody else buys their planes, I can go because that was a disaster this week. Hopefully nobody got stuck on planes, but if you did, you got the We Don't Know Sports podcast you can listen to. Gentlemen, it's been a phenomenal 2022 with you guys. Look forward to 2023 and uh, hopefully uh, you guys look forward to hearing us too. Have a great New Year's Eve. We'll see you guys next week. Until next time, bye-bye.